first moves toward changing the meaning of the word computer took place here in Berlin in the early 1930s. A young engineering student, Konrad Zusa, took the first steps toward building a computer. He had a limited objective at first. It was simply to avoid hard work. Ja, das ist ja wohl klar, dass ein junger Mensch, der äh, gerne andere Dinge treibt, nicht nur... Well, a young person clearly has better things to do than study and calculate. A civil engineer has other ideas in his head than just calculating, like plans for building bridges. And the calculations involved are not much fun. You could say that I was too lazy to calculate, and so I invented the computer. As he thought about building a computer, Zusa realized he needed a completely new approach to engineering design. Most machines, including the airplanes that Zusa was working on at the time, are built of a few basic subsystems, like the power plant, the hydraulic system, wing assemblies, and so on. Each system has a structure completely different from all the others, and once they are assembled, the purpose of the machine is determined. No amount of juggling of systems would turn these planes into cars. But a computing machine would need to be adaptable, like the human it sought to replace. The human computer used simple components, just ten numbers and a few signs. By moving them about and arranging them in different ways, she could perform a huge range of tasks in arithmetic, from stress analysis to calculating the positions of stars. Zusa reasoned that for a computer to vary its role to the same degree, it had to be based on a simple element, an element which could be easily replicated and then combined in different ways to produce different outcomes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The telephone industry used such a component, called the electric relay, a simple on-off switch. Zusa realized he could build his flexible arithmetic machine out of relays, provided his machine counted in an obscure system called the binary system, which has only two numbers, zero and one. Instead of the ten digits we use, the binary system uses only two, zero and one. Remarkably, these two digits can do as much as ten, the advantage of having only two digits is that they can be represented very simply by a switch. A switch in the on position equals one. One in the off position, a zero. Arithmetic could thus be carried out by circuits of electrical switches. Binary numbers, zeros and ones, could be added and subtracted. But to add just two binary numbers, one and one, it takes four relays. So Zusa realized that to do significant arithmetic, his computer would need hundreds of switches. Zusa's experimental machines filled the family's front room. They looked crude, but using his parents and university friends as labor, Zusa solved most of the basic design problems. In 1939, he was the world's leading computer designer. Zeus's dreams were interrupted by the outbreak of the Second World War, a war which would change the computer from a small private venture into a large government-funded enterprise. He was drafted into the army and served for six months before he was discharged when it was realized he could do more for the war effort as an engineer than as a soldier. With the help of military funding, Zusa completed two more computers using telephone relays. And to program them, he ingeniously got around wartime shortages by punching his program into rolls of discarded movie film. By the end of 1941, Zusa had succeeded in building the machine which Babbage had dreamed of 100 years before. He had a programmable general-purpose computer, and time would prove that the structure he chose 
and the use of binary arithmetic were the right solutions. But the relays meant that his machine was still too slow to be very useful. It took three to five seconds to perform a multiplication. There was a faster switch available. The vacuum tube was the foundation of the new electronics industry. Vacuum tubes were most commonly used in radios where they acted as amplifiers, but they could be used equally well as lightning fast switches. One of the friends who had helped Sousa build his first machine, Helmut Schreier, believed that the future of computers was electronic. He came to my workshop and said, you ought to do this with vacuum tubes. I thought he was joking at first, but we thought about it, and the idea that you would be able to calculate 1,000 times faster was magic. Excited by the prospect of a fantastically fast machine based on vacuum tubes, the two young men laid their plans. They calculated that working together it would take them two years to build an electronic computer. But when in 1941 they put in a request for funding, the German high command turned them down. Hitler had decided that no long-term projects should be undertaken. The war, he said, would be won in much less than two years. At that time it seemed obvious that two years was too long. So nothing became of electronic development in Germany. Zeus's dream was shattered. His great achievements would not be known until long after the war. The future of computing would indeed be electronic, but it would be realized elsewhere.